and it's time for a tag video. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. This is going to be the 20 bookish questions tag. I saw this at Berna's Bookish Adventures, and the original is created by Booktime with Elvis. I will leave links to both of the videos down below. They're both channels I really enjoy watching. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing this. I haven't done a tag video for a while. This one, I did just glance at the questions, so it's going to be a bit more of a quick fire response type <laughs> style response. Um, and, uh, uh, it felt like uh, when I just I only have so much time today and I really wanted to do a video and I this one didn't look like I had to run around and find 20 books. Uh, I could be wrong. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So the first question is, how many books is too many books in a book series? Um... I would say more than 10. So I guess 11. Um, I feel like and that's for a, like a long arc plot kind of series. Um, after that point, I feel like it's a bit more uh, episodic. Um, I think that's using that term correctly, where you're on one more adventure or solving one more case with whomever the series is about or following. And I find that that's a not quite... Um, and I know that for me, that's not generally what I like. I like stories that have more of a long arc plot. Um, and there are definitely series with long arc plots that are longer than 20 books, but I kind of feel like if it's going to take more than 20 books just to say this, what's going on, it's a little too much of a time investment for me. I don't mind going on one more adventure after 10 books, but after 10 books, I want to know like what the big mystery is or the big reveal is or have the big battle or what whatever I want. I want the answer <laughs> by book 10. <laughs> Number two, how do you feel about cliffhangers? Um, ooh, I don't read tons with cliffhangers. I find cliffhangers sometimes come in the epilogues, which are a little, sometimes a little more like giving you a little, you know, sense of what where the next book is going. Um, Hmm. I don't know. I guess generally speaking, I'm not super fond of it. As long as there is a resolve, I'm okay with it. If it's lead up and then no resolve and a cliffhanger, less of a fan. Um, but I would say that I more so read books where there are a lot of them have been released. So I'm not actually left hanging. I can just go to the next book. Um, I understand why they do it. Uh, but it's not my favorite. I would I don't mind a cliffhanger if there is a resolve. So if the story is pretty much resolved and then you get something that lets you know where the next one is going, that's okay. But if, you know, you read the whole book and like they open the door and then they walk through the door and and then that's where you're left or someone wakes up and they don't know where they are, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of that, actually. So I guess I don't like cliffhangers. <laughs> I feel like every question is like, yes and no. It depends. <laughs> anyway, we're going to keep going. I don't know. I'm going to think about that more. But so far, yeah, needs to be a resolve and then a cliffhanger is okay. Number three, hardback or paperback? Paperback for sure. My hands get sore. And so um, holding hardbacks or even large trade paper and unfortunately a lot of the nonfiction art books I love, there are often big hardcover and it's just it's just my hands my hands are like um not uh not having it they're just you know it's not about the book it per se but paperback is much much easier to read and to be honest I read the majority of the titles on my tablet um, um or my kindle so <laughs> there's that number four oh favorite book ah <laughs> honestly I have no idea and that feels so strange because, and I know I often relate books and favorites and lists to film, but that's because um, I, yeah, film was my books for many, many years. Um, and I do have my list of my favorite films with the top 10 is really 50 and the top 100 is really 200. And I knew, do know what my favorite movie is, Star Wars, A New Hope. Um, <laughs> uh, but with books, I don't, I don't have the one book um, to rule them all. I, I don't. And I, even when I come up with favorites for the year, it's usually like in the twenties. And often there's rereads. And do you count a reread as a favorite? So I don't know. If you have a favorite book, is it about what it was to you in that moment in time? Because I feel like, for me, 
it would be something like that. Like it would be like the right book at the right time that meant something to me and shifted things. And that's why it was my favorite. But I also don't, I can't recall an experience. There are a couple of books where I felt like, oh, wow, I totally resonate. No, very few, very few. I guess I don't, I don't have a favorite book. Okay, least favorite book. That one's tough. I definitely have books that I've DNF'd, but I don't know if I would consider them least favorites. I feel like one book that I ne definitely feel had a, the most negative impact, maybe, was Lord of the Flies. And I didn't rate it. It's one of the few books I'm just like, I can't rate this. So I don't know if that qualifies. Um, I also really didn't understand the sound and the fury. <laughs> and that re review, I've turned the comments off because they got a little... <laughs> um, so, I don't know. Neither of those are favorites. I think I'd be most likely at this point to DNF something that felt like it was going to be a least favorite. I could always pick a least favorite in a series, but that's comparative. Hmm, that's a tough one. Oh my gosh, will I be able to answer any of the questions? And we're only at six. I gotta get pick up the pace. Love triangles, yes or no? Um, sparingly, you know, it can be done well. We've gone through phases where it's been very overdone. Um... It's not my favorite. Um, I, you know, I prefer when people <laughs> make up their mind, <laughs> depending on the situation. And I also feel like, and that's in sort of, that depends on if someone really does have feelings for two people. Um, and then the, the two people can get super competitive. So I would say it's not a favorite. I don't mind it, but again, sparingly. Uh, seven, the most recent book you just couldn't finish. Well, I am sitting with 31 titles on my currently reading, so I don't know if that <laughs> counts um what was the last book I gave up on hmm I, I, I don't know the answer to that the most recent book you just couldn't finish I am horrible at DNFing so there are two books on my currently reading that I started this year that I only read. There no, I wouldn't say I gave up on one. There was one that I started then that I was just like, this isn't the right time. And there's two on my currently reading that I've only read sort of like, oh, there's three that I've only read sort of like three times. Several of them were for my TBR jars. I don't want to say what they are. I feel bad about <laughs> answering that question. I'm just going to go to the next one. A book that you're currently reading. Um, Les Miserables, I'm in the section, this is just the closest book and it doesn't even have the cover. I'm in the third section out of five and I'm on page 558 of 1,304. That's a book I'm currently reading. The last book you recommended to someone, I actually don't do recommendations. <laughs> I'm just so mortified if someone would read something I recommended and then not like it. Especially because sometimes contextually, if I enjoyed something like many years ago and I haven't read it recently, I, you know, I don't have it in the context in which I see the world now. And so I might have missed things that might be, uh, you know, not uh, good or, the, or, or harmful. Um, and so I actually I avoid uh, giving recommendations. I try and describe the book in such a way that someone can easily tell whether or not it's something they would enjoy. And that's sort of the best that I can do. Uh, oldest book that you've read, publication date, uh, it would, I guess, have to be uh, The Odyssey. Um, <laughs> I imagine that's, I think that's the oldest off the top of my head. Um, newest book you've read by publication date. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Uh, I'm currently reading Arusha and the Nectar of Immortality, which is a 2022 release. I started it several days after it was published, which is very rare for me. I'm reading it on Kindle and I will finish it by the end of the month it was published in. So I am saying that into the future. I haven't finished it yet, but you know, that's as close as I can get. I'm not doing great on this. Favorite author. Um, I have about nine authors where I'm reading through all of their work. I don't know if any of those are or will be favorites um, forever. Um, do I have one? Well, some, like some of the authors on that list are... Um, Margaret Lawrence, but I've only read one and a half of her books, so it feels a bit strange to say that, I would imagine. 
I will love them all. Um, also, uh, I really, well, I really enjoy most of Alona Andrews' work. They're a husband and wife duo. Um, so I've read now some of their older works that I didn't enjoy, so that makes it a bit challenging. I'm reading through all the works of Jennifer Robertson, um, who writes fantasy, and all of the works of Michelle Willingham, who writes uh, historical romance. Uh, so those are some that I, and I also really do enjoy Ray Bradbury, who's also on that list, and. Um, uh, oh, there's someone else that I missed. Uh, Isaac Asimov. Well, Foundation I didn't love. Foundation I didn't love. Arthur C. Clarke so far has been a, a hit. Um, so those are some. Uh, <laughs> instead of one. Tw uh, 13, buying books or borrow. Both. Do them all. <laughs> I into, I generally borrow books. I borrow a lot of books from the, the uh, like, Overdrive, but I also love Scribd, which I technically is kind of a borrowing service. You sort of, I don't know if you can, like, you, it's kind of like, net, right? It's like Netflix for books. Um, and I enjoy owning, I enjoy buying books as well, but I don't feel the need to own everything. I'm very happy to pass things, most things along once I've read them. Uh, so, but I do, most of my reading is borrowed, probably 60%. Uh, 14, a book you dislike that everyone else seems to love. Oh, that's tough. I think Lord of the Flies is one of them, although it is sort of split down the middle. Uh, a book you dislike that everyone seems to love. Mistborn I DNF'd, American Gods I DNF'd. Those are my standard answers to that question. Um, uh, I think that's the best I can do. Uh, 15, bookmark or dog ears. Uh, bookmark, I don't like to dog ear my books. Unless I got something secondhand, and I like to read stuff that I got secondhand because then I don't have to worry about it. But if I have something in a nice edition, I do try and keep it in good condition. 16, a book you can always reread. Uh, I reread Macbeth annually, um, and I think I'm going to add rereading Beowulf annually because I understand so little of it that I think it could, and I have read lots of different iterations of it over the years. Um, I just noticed that earlier this year, so I'm adding it to my list of annual rereads, and I'm hoping over the years I will understand it more. And Macbeth is one of my favorite books of all time, and I do annually reread it. Um, 17, uh, can you read while listening to music, while hearing music? Um, I listen to instrumental um, uh, and soundtracks and scores on Spotify, usually when I read, um, and I mostly I do it to sort of like get the like ambient volume uh, down I, and so I don't pick up hearing stuff um, and so yeah but uh, the answer is yes but if it has lyrics no if the lyrics aren't in English sometimes it depends on what language it is and because um, I do have some that I listen to that I Kind of get a sense of it, but I don't, I'm probably not understanding it. 18, uh, one POV or multiple POVs. Um, it doesn't matter to me as long as it's clear. Um, I do sometimes find it hard when it's third person and multiple POVs. It's not when it's third person and you're seeing from different perspectives, but it's not directly, you know, this person than that person, right? Like Game of Thrones style. Um, I prefer the clarity. Uh, so first person or chapters, alternating chapters, sometimes third person. Older works, no problem, but I've noticed more recent works that are third person. I'm just like, whose head are we in? I don't know, I don't know what's going on. 19, do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? Over multiple days, with the only exception is like kids picture books. Um, even a uh, volume of manga, I will start it and read like one or two, like 60 pages, and then I'll read 140 later. I just... I much let like my brain just sort of like working on the story and thinking about things and then coming back to it later. Um, I'm not, I really, I actually have a hard time reading, especially like regular prose in like one sitting. It's very, it's very uncomfortable for me. Um, number 20, who do you tag? Anyone, anyone who hasn't done this tag yet? Anyone? No, I was going to say that. Anyone over 20? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I don't do age things. Um, anyone who's 
birthdays on the 20th. Um, how about that? So, um, yeah, so that's the tag. I hope that you enjoyed it. I apologize that it was a little all over the place. I'm just getting back into the swing of doing videos. And so, uh, this is the best that I could do today. Uh, let me know, let me know your favorite book. I would love to know your favorite book and how or why it became or continues to be your favorite. That's something that I would like to think about more because I feel like I should have an answer to that question and I am a bit at a loss. So I'm going to continue to think on that and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll be back soon with another one. Thanks so much for watching.